I had so much fun with you. I feel like I've known you guys for like years and for so long. And I'm going to miss you all so much. And I'm going to come back. And when I come back, I want you all to remember, to remember me. Are you guys going to remember me? Yes. Yes? Yeah. Who's going to miss me the most? Oh. You enjoyed him? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> He'll be back. He'll come back. Where is Pranas? I miss you guys, I'm gonna come back soon. And back here with the Bay. I'm with the Bay's here, back here in London for a day. Yeah. And I want to give a huge shout out to them. They gave me like this. I give a shake. No, shout out to you guys. They gave me a girl walk. They gave me a girl blazer and a ring. And a present for my husband. And I proposed to Adam. Yeah, and he's my husband. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Hey guys, what's up? We are back here in London. We're only gonna be here for like 16 hours. We're doing a quick shoot in a barn. Like somewhere like where a farmer hat. I didn't have my farmer hat. It's back in Uganda. I miss Uganda so so much. But we're heading to you know heading to the barn and to everybody who came to the airport. Thank you so much for showing a lot of love. Um, I know I think Aisha, Serena, and Alina, you guys gave me this shirt. Yazzie gave me this hat, and this is Nas's jacket. So I'm like wearing other people's stuff. I'm wearing other people's stuff for the music video. So eh. after that, we're gonna head back to New York City. I'm uploading the vlog right now for you guys. It's about 3 p.m. UK time. So once it's up. It's gonna be up for you guys, man. It's processing. Hey, we just found a Dunkin' Donuts in somewhere in London. I don't know. We're gonna go no, try it out. St. Albans. Where? St. Albans. St. Albans. We're gonna try it out. See if it's a real Dunkin' Donuts. If it's like the ones in New York. Well, it looks different. It looks so different. Real. That door looks different. I mean, the, the sign looks the same. But let's go try and see if the ice caramel lattes are the same. Ready? But how can donuts be different? Bro. Trust me, lattes, donuts could taste different. Let's see if it's the this same. This guy, man. Okay. I'm gonna try it out and see. Let's go. I'm gonna show you some UK Dunkin' Donuts. Man. All right, we'll show you some USA Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We'll see. We'll see. It's looking good so far. The donuts look really different. Um, no, it looks a little similar. Below donuts look really different, but I'm not gonna lie, they look really good. They look like they taste really, really good. All right, so this is what we do in New York. So I'm giving you a taste of what's gonna happen in New York City. We sit down in Dunkin' Donuts and we hang out for like eight hours. So you ready for that? Alright. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bro, bro. This is a medium ice latte. Bro, what's wrong with that? First of all, there's no whipped cream. There's no what? First of all, there's no whipped cream. Second of all, there's no caramel in this, bro. This is a fake Dunkin' Donuts. How can it be fake? Bro, this is a bro, it's a Dunkin' Donuts. How can it be fake? Bro, this is a fake. <laughs> nah, bro. This is <laughs> I'm gonna try it out and see if it's good. But I say I got a pink straw. That's a brain freeze. Bro, it's not the same. It is? It does not. Bro, taste it. Taste the one right now. Taste it. Like it. No, no. Bro, taste it. I got brain And then freeze. tomorrow in New York, I'm gonna let you taste the real one. Taste bro, it. Bro, bro, bro. It's frozen. Taste it. Taste no, it. Bro, look at the Taste it. Bro, there's people looking at us. Who cares? Why is this guy so embarrassing? Who cares? What do you say? Taste it. You taste it. I don't want it. <laughs> You're a YouTuber, right? Yeah, I don't know. There's Dunkin' Donuts. What's up? What's the YouTuber? True Story ASA. Yes! Yeah. You know what? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. So, alright, so, so they found out from YouTube and they're saying that London is better than New York. But I'm telling you, London, um, New York is much better than London because you, you I'll want. I'm talking to you, Adam. Yeah. I'll tell you right now. What? You're saying that you're, New York is better than London, but New York has absolutely no soul. Nah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. That's alright. <laughs> New York has New York what? Has no soul. Every street corner, you got Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. Starbucks. And then if you look at Wall Street, it's equivalent to Clary Wharf. Yeah. Well, you got Wall Street, you got markets, you got people yeah. dancing. I don't want to see that shit. You go to work, you want to actually go into work. Nah, but it's interesting. You, don't want to mess you need to go with the right person. You need to go. Every American comes up five minutes. That's it's true though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Come to London, you prefer London. Nah. So, you know, London is amazing, London's don't you worry. Smaller, yeah. don't be wrong, it's smaller, it's more connected, but it's a lot better. But you went with the wrong person. Next time you gotta come with me. You gotta come with me next time. Watch. He's gonna like New York more because he's going with me. You know what I'm saying? You got. You got... No, don't be wrong. New York's cool. Yeah. For two, three days after that, he's come back home. Nah, 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 nah. Welcome nah. home. You missed it. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, thank you. The one and only in the blue corner. Corner coming all the way from New York City, 
weighing into 285 pounds, Adam Sullivan. We spoke in the dressing rooms. Yeah. You both know the rules. Yeah. Nothing without a vote. Okay. Touch gloves. Let's go. Okay. I'm out of breath! <laughs> <She's going. laughs> you good? I'm out of breath! <laughs> Give me some water! Alright guys, so I don't know if you guys know, but a couple days ago, once we landed in Uganda, we got locked up in a cell in the customs. It was like literally like a jail cell. We didn't get arrested, but we got locked up for about 16, 17 hours. We were starved to death. They did not give us no food or anything at all until we left. So I'm going to show you guys and tell you guys the whole story of what happened. So this is what happened. We went through customs. We're talking with the lady in the front. And, you know, when they give the customs, they got to stamp something or something like that. So she asked this question. She was like, um, oh, are you, uh, are, are you Muslim? And then I ended up saying, oh, alhamdulillah, yeah. Because I, I thought she was Muslim, so I said, alhamdulillah. Then she waited, and she just like she just looked for a little bit. And then I'm like, is there something wrong? She's like, no, wait. And she went to go speak to another lady. And then she told us, wait over there. We sat down in a seat, waiting for like 30 minutes. And then out of nowhere, the, some guy, like the customs officer guy, he's like, come in. Come to this room. We we're like, okay. We went to the room. We were all so confused because I was getting thoughts like, oh, is it because we're Muslim? But I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to like... I didn't want to assume that's a problem, so I didn't want to assume nothing. So that was just like a, a hint, maybe it is. And then once we got to the room, he was like, okay, go to this room. It had like a really horrible bed, and it was like a cell. It was like legit a jail cell. And then he was like, you guys are going to be in here for a couple hours, something like that. And don't worry, everything will be fine. And we kept asking them, what's the issue? What's the issue? Is everything okay? Is everything all right? They didn't want to tell us anything. Like, nope, it's nothing. Just go in there and wait. So we went in there, and the guy locked like a door and a cell. And then we're like, excuse me, can you not lock us? Like, we're not criminals to be locked like this or anything like that. And then he was like, no, I'm going to have to lock it because this is like some kind of hold. I'm like, look, this is a cell and we came here to do charity work. We didn't come here to get locked up or anything like that. So then we kept telling him, please don't, don't like lock the door or nothing like that. Because I get really claustrophobic. And then after that, he said no. He screamed so loud. He said no. And he just locked the door. So once we went in, I seen like these writings on the wall. And all of the writings were about, you know, Muslims being in there, Somalis being there, and stuff like that, as you can see. Crazy. This is unbelievable. See, look, I love Muslims. Proud to be Somali. Somalia is in my They hold up all, like, the Muslims and stuff like that. So that's what it seems like. So that was another clue that we were in there because we were Muslim and we were being racially profiled or something like that, even though it's 2015. And then we waited. I still didn't want to assume. I still didn't want to assume. Even if I saw all the stuff, all the writings against the wall that um, about Somali and Proud, about Muslims being in there, I still didn't want to assume. And then 20 minutes later, another Muslim guy comes in and joins us. He comes in and he says, Assalamu alaikum. I'm Turkish and I'm Muslim and I'm brought in here. We all look around at each other and we're like, oh, what a coincidence, all of us are Muslim and went in here, so that's when it was proven that we were in there, I felt like it's proven we were in there because we we're Muslim. If that doesn't prove anything, if me saying Alhamdulillah, me seeing on the walls that you're Muslim when you're in there, and another Muslim guy comes in, three stuff, that just proves that we're in there because we're Muslim. You're okay? You're from Turkey, right? Yes. He's from Turkey, he doesn't speak no English, we're trying to talk to him and communicate. Adam, yeah. get a pillow and lay down. Bro, I, I, I cannot sleep, Allah. I can't sleep. Let's get some sleep, innit? Bro, they said we have to stay here for a whole day. I, I can't. Yeah. I can't. We've all been granted to bring in customs. No one's good. No one's good. <laughs> we're in customs right now. It's me, Ziggy, Naz, and they brought in a Turkish guy here too. This is Muslim. Let's lock you up. It's legit. It's legit. It's legit. They legit locked us up. There's nothing like... 
This is, they locked us up. I'm so like, oh my God. All right guys, we have a big, big issue and the customs here are not telling us anything. They just took us straight in, literally to like the customs jail cell and we're bugging out. My phone is 10% and we called, uh, I, I called my lawyers straight up and my phone, my phone is about that. So I don't know, I spoke to my family and the lawyer, all of our phones about that. There's no plug here or nothing. And the organizers for the orphanage, they all came and they tried to sort it out, but they couldn't, the customs still didn't let us in. They're not telling us what's wrong. They just literally threw us in. I'm, I'm literally scared for my life right now and I don't know what's going on, but inshallah everything goes well. And I don't even know what to say because I'm so, so worried, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting really claustrophobic. I get really close to full with stuff like this. They let us have our phones aside, but they didn't even let us charge it or anything like that. So it died in like literally two or three hours. We all got so scared because the electricity was turning off and it would get pitch black. Imagine pitch black in a place where it smells so bad in a really small, rough area and like you don't know what's gonna you don't know what's happening. You're in, you're in a different country and you don't know. Three hours later we got up, we banged on the door. All of us were banging so hard. We're screaming that we're hungry, we're screaming that we're thirsty. Nobody came. We're here laughing outside. Six hours later, we tried to sleep. Six hours later, we kept kept on banging, screaming. I was going crazy. I was having like this panic attack. I, I didn't know what I was doing. Nas and, and Ziggy had to like calm me down and everything like that. Ten hours later, we continued kicking everything. We were begging. We we're like, please. And the lady finally opened the door. She peeked at it like that. She's like, you have to be patient. And she just closed it straight back like that. I didn't know what to do. I was so scared for my life. I thought like... I was thinking of the most negative thing possible. 16 hours later, when I don't know, somehow my brother found out and uh, and Nas's whole family found out, they called the British Embassy and my family called the American Embassy and my lawyer and they contacted the Ugandan Customs and everything and they made a big, big report on them because what they did was wrong. They, they weren't supposed to torture us like that. They put us through all that torture for no reason. We asked them, even at the end, after 16 hours later, I asked them, what was wrong? They're like, no, we cannot tell you a problem. It was just an investigation, and they just let us go after. It was just a crazy day, but a horrible experience. But I'm so glad that after that, it happened to be an amazing, an amazing experience. And meeting the kids in the orphanage were just amazing, amazing time. But that was just crazy. I didn't know what my life was going to, but I guess it's a crazy memory to think of. And racial profiling does exist sometimes. So, yeah. Hope you guys enjoy this vlog. It's time to wrap it up. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. If you guys did enjoy this vlog, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for doing me. You guys have been going so hard on a thumbs up. So if you've been going turkey, go turkey on this vlog. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm going to be heading back to New York because we're going to be having an NYC show really, really soon. So I'll see you guys soon. Take care and peace. I love you.